Hi guys, Coach Fens here, your head froth meister from FTP Training with another Friday Tips with Fens. Well, it's going back to school today and uh, standing in front of a whiteboard is something I used to do when I was teaching and lecturing sports science and anatomy and physiology. And that's what we're going to have a little bit of a look at today. Um, understanding the different limiters to performance. I think it's important as athletes to understand what limits us um, and get an understanding of understanding that that physiology enables us to better understand why we're doing certain forms of training. So back in university days, you know, we used to get the lecturers give us, um, you know, these questions. What limits performance? And one of the big things or one of the, you know, the usual classic thing for um, most um, exercise physiologists, are, are limitations central or are they peripheral? Or more recently, um, Dr. Noakes over from South, uh, South uh, Africa, um, Professor Tim Noakes, um, came up with an idea that it was the governor or the brain. So how does this actually uh, manifest in terms of, uh, of training or uh, for us as athletes? How does it show? How do we train it? What do we do? So central adaptations obviously refer to um, our heart, lungs, stroke volume, um, breathing, diaphragm, etc. So the central area of our um, respiratory system. The peripheral adaptations refer to things like our capillarization or capillary densities within the muscles, the oxidative enzymes which help us carry and break down um, fuel in the muscles, uh, the ability to carry oxygen there through those capillaries, uh, mitochondrial density. So all of these things happen as byproducts of us training. The more we train, the more we can adapt, say, the left ventricle of the heart, the diaphragm muscle, so it can beat harder or faster uh, and put more blood or oxygenated blood down to the working muscles. If, however, you haven't got the network of capillaries or the enzymes or the mitochondria to process that at a peripheral level, of course, having this big central system is no good. I like to use the analogy of our energy systems as like a car. You can have a big V8 under the bonnet, but if the drive chain, drive train and, and stuff is not up to it, you're not going to be able to see that horsepower at the wheels. However, if you've developed workouts which develop the peripheral as well as the central, then you're getting the best of both worlds and you're training both areas. Now, as athletes or as a coach, I generally see certain people are limited in one form or the other. I'll give a classic example really of myself. I'm centrally limited. You know, I had a VO2 um, back in the day in the labs of up to about 75 mils per kilogram, which isn't actually too bad, but it's not as good as I wanted and it's not as good as some of the guys with the big, big motors. So when I go out and when I try and elicit or get my best performances, I tend to do that using a bit of muscular force and strength. And I tend to use more efficient form um, of producing power by using lower cadences. You'll see those guys with bigger VO2s can often access that by using more of the central system and revving harder. So they'll use higher cadences. So again, if you default to being a high cadence rider, um, it can mean that you're good centrally. You may want to carry out some SE type training and develop a little bit more strength in that muscle as well and recruitment of muscle at a, at a, at a, a peripheral level. Something that we all know is it comes, say, the Olympic finals in any given event, the top 10 people there are all physiological gods. They're there because they're fantastic specimens and fantastic athletes. So the, what then determines who's going to win that race? And this is where I really like uh, Dr. Tim Noakes' ideas on the governor theory. And, um, you know, it's, it's really interesting when you look at those races, often the ten, top 10 are all physiologically capable of winning but one wins and one comes last. And often it's the, it's the governor that dictates that. It's how we process things, how we handle the stress, how we um, deal with the pain and the suffering, how we process the race as we're racing it. So a lot of that processing coming from the brain. In cycling uh, particularly, you know, it can relate to people like Tour de France riders. You've often heard, for instance, you know, riders that ride a Tour de France um, become stronger and I think that's a process of you've basically pushed your body to the very limits that it can go and the organism or the whole organism of the body has not broken down it's handled it 
Therefore, the brain goes, well, I didn't, you know, I didn't die during doing that activity. I didn't die, it didn't break down. I can possibly go harder. And through going through multiple Tour de France's or multiple big stage races, m multiple long ultra endurance events, we develop more resilience and, and, a, and a better governor system that allows us to push our bodies harder, faster. All right, guys, just a little bit of exercise fizz stuff, looking at what limits our performance and how you might be limited in your performance and what you can do to change it. All right, guys, I hope to catch you out on the trail. See you later. Bye-bye.